Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're doing the ECMW 30 day look ahead for today's first video for the UK and for Europe as well. It's going to take us into uh, May. So we're going to look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies uh, for the next four weeks from the ECMWF uh, long range model. Um, we can't uh, see mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar height anomalies, unfortunately, but you can get a rough idea of what model is going to be uh, forecast in terms of the overall pressure pattern from these temperature and precipitation anomalies, if you interpret them. So that's what we're going to do for today's first video. Coming up later on, we'll have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days uh, as well in the regular weather video. And that'll be with you this afternoon on the homepage at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this one. So a big thank you to them for supplying us with these temperature and precipitation anomaly charts. Right, so we're starting off with uh, week one temperature anomalies. It's week 16 for the year. It's for the 15th through to the 21st of uh, April. So the coming week, essentially. Uh, so we see that we've got a real northwest southeast split across uh, Europe this week. So up in the north and the west of Europe, it's significantly warmer than average. Warmer than average through uh, Scandinavia, down into the UK and Ireland, through uh, Germany, Low Countries, France, to Spain and uh, the north of Portugal. All of those areas in the north and west of Europe are coming out uh, warmer than average in the week ahead. UK is around 1 to 3 degrees above average. One or two places, northern France, some parts of the low countries coming out between 3 and 6 degrees above average. And also across northern Scandinavia. Even warmer than that across Iceland. It's always a job to make out Iceland on these maps because they're a bit covered up by the, um, the, the date there. But uh, it looks as though some parts of Iceland are going to around 6 to 10 degrees above average very limited area however from uh, from poland eastwards it's a lot cooler in fact you say it's colder in this east and southeastern part of europe so uh, particularly sort of from the balkans from the asiatic over towards the black sea and then down to greece also southern parts of ukraine looking quite cold really um, temperature anomalies are between around three and six degrees below average in these areas also into southern parts of italy Real east-west split through the Med, so uh, western parts of the Mediterranean looking warm, uh, pretty warm. Eastern parts of the Mediterranean, including Greece, looking quite cold. And the south precipitation anomalies are concerned for the week ahead. Well, uh, you can see where the high pressure is going to be sitting. It's across these northern and central parts of Europe. So it's much drier than average across Scandinavia. Most of the UK is also drier than average. I mean, down through central parts of Europe, Germany, down towards sort of Italy, and then um, down into the southeast, places like Hungary, uh, coming out drier than average there, also through the Balkans. Into the far west of the Mediterranean, so for Spain and Portugal, Actually, looks quite unsettled there, significantly above average precipitation, particularly through the holiday areas, interestingly. So, uh, the costas look very wet there uh, on that uh, Mediterranean coast of Spain. And then going over to the Balearic Islands of Mallorca, Menorca, and Ibiza are also looking quite wet there. So, if you're planning an Easter break to the um, to the holiday islands of the central basin of the Med or to the costas, then uh, you'll need to take your brolly with you. It looks like it'll be quite unsettled with some big thunderstorms uh, around. Fairly showery across the southeastern uh, part of the Mediterranean. Otherwise, I say most parts of Europe are actually drier than average, dominated by high pressure. The UK is looking dry in the week ahead. And then we go through to uh, week two, which of course is week 17 for uh, 2019, but it's week two for our forecast period. And we can see what's happening now. We find that both warm and average temperature anomalies are being pushed to east. So the far west of Europe is actually cooling. Uh, Ireland, UK, France, Spain, Portugal, we're uh, going close to or maybe even slightly below average in some areas. But from the UK and eastern France eastwards, most other areas are warmer than average, particularly warm by now uh, in this week across eastern and northeastern parts of uh, Europe, where we've got temperature anomalies of between 3 and 6 degrees above average. More widely, we're between around 1 and 3 degrees uh, above average. So the warmth is being pushed eastwards, most colder than average temperature anomalies. You can still see them. They're being pushed down into the uh, Middle East. So everything is being shifted from west to east, essentially. 
And it's also turning more unsettled in the west of Europe as well. So this is clearly an indication that the Atlantic is coming back. Uh, low pressure is returning from this week, the 22nd to the 28th of April. Uh, we've got uh, above average precipitation there for the UK, for Ireland, for much of France. A little bit above average through um, Belgium, Holland, those sort of areas. I mean, going north was into southern parts of Scandinavia, Denmark, south of Norway. Uh, again, generally a little bit above average with precipitation there. Over in the east of the southeast of Europe, it uh, looks a little bit drier than average, uh, actually. So, obviously, everything is being shunted uh, from west to east. The Atlantic's coming back, it's turning more unsettled, it's turning cooler, it's also turning wetter in the north and the west of Europe, it's turning warmer and drier into the eastern part of uh, Europe. Then we move through to uh, week three. Uh, that, of course, is going to be week 18. For our uh, forecast period, so uh, let's try and get that up again. So uh, there we go, we've got week 18 for our forecast period, which is going to take us from the 29th of April through to the 5th of May. It's week 3, uh, week 18 for the year. Uh, and another change, so really quite a changeable uh, sort of uh, a few weeks ahead. Now, most parts of Europe are going warmer than average, milder than average conditions returning, uh, particularly so to the western part of Europe, where it's cooler in week 2 by week 3. It's going warmer uh, again, so parts of Ireland, Ireland and Scotland, still a little bit uh, close to average there, but really for most of England and Wales, it's warmer than average. I mean, anywhere south and east of that, generally, it's warmer than average too. So quite a warm scene. Even up to Scandinavia, we see that uh, many parts of Scandinavia are coming out on the warmer than average side. And um, particularly warm across many of the central and southern parts of Europe. It looks nice and warm through the Mediterranean as well. Most parts of the Med uh, looking warm than average of Spain and Portugal in west, uh, over towards sort of Italy and then down to uh, Greece in the east. Well, it's a little bit close to average, actually, for the Greek islands. Uh, temperature anomalies are around 1 to 3 degrees above average, so it's not desperately hot, but it's certainly uh, a warmer week there as we go through to the closing day or so of April and the opening days of May. Precipitation-wise, it looks like high pressure is probably coming back here because most places are going drier than average. So where it's wetter, again, in week two, it's going drier again in week three. So again, we see that for Ireland, UK, France, uh, low countries, Germany, those sort of areas are a little bit wetter in week uh, two. For week three, 29th of April to 5th of May, it's going to average or drier than average conditions. Most of these central parts of Europe are also on the drier than average side. So it's a little bit unsettled down across Spain and Portugal, so maybe some thunderstorms down there. Over across Scandinavia, not too far from average precipitation-wise. It looks a bit on the wet side, though, for uh, for Norway. I think this week you're definitely seeing high pressure uh, building back after a more unsettled interlude in um, week two. And then finally, we go through to week four, week 19 for 2019. Uh, this is the 5th through to the 12th. Um, 5th to 12th of May. And uh, overall, quite a mild scene, quite a warmer scene again across most parts of Europe. The real warmth is in this eastern part of Europe by this point. Uh, the northwest may be going a little bit cooler, but I think many places actually are either average or mild and average. There's not much sign of colder than average conditions here as we go from the 6th through to the 12th of May. Precipitation-wise, the signal is weakening, as it often does, but time to get through to week 4 with precipitation. Looks a little bit on the unsettled side for Scandinavia. Uh, some of these eastern parts of Europe are maybe hinting at being a bit drier there, so maybe high pressure in the east of Europe. And if anything, possibly just a little bit more unsettled again, I'd say, in this western corner. It's not a big deviation, it's not a strong anomaly, but possibly just going a little bit more unsettled there in the west of the northwest of Europe uh, from the 6th through to the 12th of May. But they are very weak signals. Much of the Mediterranean is close to average too. So quite a changeable month of it coming up, actually, with temperatures a bit up and down, but overall a mild of an average uh, four weeks ahead. does go a little bit cooler, particularly in the north and west of Europe, as we get through to uh, week two. The east of Europe starting quite cold for this week, for week one. Uh, and also a little bit um, changeable with precipitation as well. So um, just it looks like it'll be alternating between high pressure and low pressure really over the next uh, four weeks. Nothing particularly dramatic being highlighted. And overall, <coughs> excuse me, possibly 
a little bit on the uh, milder than average side, I would have thought, particularly for the most central and northern parts of Europe. We'll do it all over again uh, next week, and of course that's going to take us further on into May. These uh, long-range models, all of them, are highly experimental and prone to chopping change. The ECMWF is at the high end of the uh, long-range model output, it's at the more reliable end of the long-range model output. But as we saw in the winter, when it's consistently trying to bring about colder than average uh, conditions, and they very rarely came off, um, it is not by any means uh, of the imagination reliable. So all of this, any forecast beyond sort of five to seven days is prone to a big health warning and a large pinch of salt. It could all look really quite different next week. All right, we'll be back later on this afternoon with your week to 10 day video update. That'll be on the homepage. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.